Hello everyone and welcome back to yet another Mech Deck Tech. I'm Mechanized Minion, aka the Energy King, and today we have a custom deck tech for you featuring Leonardo da Vinci from the Assassin's Creed set. This episode is dedicated to Cyclone 630. Cyclone, you rock. So, Leonardo da Vinci, right? Legendary human artificer, he's a 3-3 three, three for 3. You can pay 5 mana, and until end of turn, the options you control have a base power and toughness of XX, where X is the number of cards in your hand. Not bad, not bad. And for 3 in the tap, you can draw a card, discard a card. If you discard an artifact this way, you exile it from your grave and create a token copy of it. That is a 0-2 Thopter. The goal here is to discard very expensive artifacts, create token copies of them on the cheap, and kind of just pop off from there. Let's get started. We're going to start this list off with some, like, token support, um, as well as a single mention to ways to kind of work around the fact that you're exiling really powerful artifacts from your grave. So at the top of this list is going to be Karn the Great Creator. Four cost, five loyalty. You do have to plus one them a little bit to like balance out the fact that his minus two is really what we're here for. But it does let you grab one of your artifacts that you've exiled and put it back into your hand, which would honestly let you do your commander's ability once again. Relatively budget, right? Seven to ten dollar range, depending on where you're getting it, quality, all that jazz. But I think he's really strong here. The only other Planeswalker in the deck is Tezzeret, Artifice Master. So, 5 cost, 5 loyalty. Not bad. Uh, plus 1 gives you a Thopter. Which, again, we're doing Thopter stuff already. Uh, so we're pretty happy with it. For 0, you could draw a card. If you control 3 or more artifacts, you instead draw 2. We're pretty likely to almost always control at least three artifacts, uh, and he's pretty budget, right? So it's around like the two to three dollar mark. I think that's pretty budget. Sticking with token support, we have the Curiosity Crafter, a three three for four mana. They give you no maximum hand size, which Leonardo is loving. They fly themselves, and whenever one of your creature tokens deals combat damage to a player, you get to draw a card. So, all in all, pretty strong. I'm here for it. Following that up, we have Cyberman Squadron from the Doctor Who set. They are seven mana, so a prime candidate to kind of like, let's just discard these bad boys real quick and create a token copy. Uh, but they are normally a 5-5, five five, and non-legendary artifact creatures you control have myriad. So we're going to be generating a ton of extra token copies of things. And again, we're here for it, right? These tokens are going to feed the Curiosity Crafter, which is going to feed Leonardo. Everybody wins. I wouldn't say this is directly token support, but I feel like they're very well supported by our generation of tokens. And this could be the Kappa Cannoneer. So for six mana, they're a 4-4 four, four with Warp 4, which basically means no one's ever going to pay the extra four mana to touch them. Uh, they have Improvise, which is nice, and whenever they or another artifact enters the battlefield under our control, they're going to get a plus one, plus one counter, and they can't be blocked for the turn. So, again, I feel like this is honestly another prime example of, do I just pay three and create a token copy of him? And I think the answer is yes. So sure, they're going to come in as a zero two, but they're also going to make it so they're coming out earlier, they're gaining power as we play other artifacts anyways, and then they can't be blocked, which is going to go well with the Curiosity Crafter. Following that up, kind of getting away from Thopters and leaning a little bit into Murs, we do have the Mur Battle Sphere. Uh, so whenever they enter, they're going to create you four tokens. So along with themselves, that is five bodies for the Kappa Cannoneer. And on attack, we get to tap down those Murs, beef up our Battle Sphere a little bit, and do a little bit of damage to a player or Planeswalker that we are attacking with it. I'm going to count this here. I think Research Thief kind of also fits into token support, and specifically in this deck. So there is 3-3 that we can flash in for 5 mana. They're also flying whenever one of our artifact creatures, which is all of our creatures, uh, deal combat damage to a player. We are drawing cards. With those saucers that fly, you know, we're going to get in for the damage. 
Speaking of that, we have Psy Master Thopterist. So whenever we cast an artifact spell, we're creating a Thopter. And we could sacrifice two artifacts to draw a card. Uh, it does cost us two minutes to do it, but I think it's fine. Following that up, super budget, six mana, four, four flyer. Whatever an artifact creature we control deals combat damage to a player, we get to create a blue, we get to create that many 1-1 one, one blue softers. Uh, yes please. Flood our field. <laughs> Threefold Thunderhulk is going to follow that up. Seven mana, zero, zero. <laughs> they do enter with three plus one plus one counters, uh, but I feel like this is a prime candidate for Leonardo. Go ahead and just discard this for us. Get it, get it in the grave. Uh, because that would make them a flying 3-5. And when they enter the battlefield or attack, we get to create a number of 1-1 one, one colorless dumb artifact creatures equal to its power. And we could pay 2 to sacrifice an artifact to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on them. Uh, so 3-fold three fo three fold Thunder Hulk. Super budget. It's like 81 cents. Like Most you're going to pay for this is like a dollar. Um, and I think works really well with Leonardo. One of the few non-artifact creatures in the deck is Urza, Lord High Artificer. So they enter the battlefield, they're going to create us a construct, we already love it. Makes it so all of our artifacts are going to tap for blue, also good, we're in a mono blue deck. And we can pay 5 to shuffle the library and exile the top card until the end of the turn, we can play that card for free. Uh, everything here is great, we love it. Kind of sticking into tokens, not, not so much in the creature variety, but like in the ramping variety, we have the Urza Power Stone Prodigy. 10 cent card, super cheap, super budget. 1 3 for 3, they are a vigilant creature. We could pay 1 and tap into the draw this card whenever we discard one or more artifact cards, which we're already planning on doing with Leonardo, anyways. Uh, we get to create a tapped Power Stone. This is only going to trigger once a turn, but that's fine. Following that up, we have the Whirler Rogue, so we're going to make some creatures unblockable. This is great for us. They're also going to create us two more Thopters. We love having more Thopters. I'm going to count this in the Artifact Support, not Artifact Support. I'm going to count this in the Token Support as well. It's the Worm Coil Engine. A 6-6 Death Touch Lifelinker. Whenever they die, we get to create a 3-3 Worm with Death Touch and a 3-3 Worm with Lifelink. And, you know, it'll be a good time. Good time. Good time. Next up is honestly kind of a coup de grace for us. This is March of Progress. So for three mana, we get to cast this at sorcery speed. We could choose a artifact creature we control. For each creature chosen this way, we're going to create a token copy of it. For seven mana, we could overload this and choose all of them. And... I, I mean, obviously doubling the number of creatures we control is huge. And especially if our Kappa Cannoneer is already out, you know, we're going to just create a stupid amount of them. He's going to get a ton of power, and then he can't be blocked. So maybe we just take out an opponent. It's good. Another super budget card. This is kind of an expensive counter spell at five mana. And I know what you're thinking. Five mana to counter a spell? Yes. We're, we're paying five mana. Uh, it counters any spell, and we get to create a Thopter, a uh, number of Thopters equal to the mana value of that card. Following up our March of Progress, we have Intrude on the Mind. Five mana instant. We're going to reveal the top five of our library. We're going to break them up into two piles. An opponent will choose one pile to go to our hands, the other will go to the grave. We're also going to create a 0-0 zero, zero Thopter. But that Thopter will get a plus one, plus one counter for each card that went into our grave. So we're really thinning the deck. We're putting some things in our grave, and I think that's fine. And we're getting a ton of value out of it. Launch Mishap. Uh, another counter spell that generates the Thopter. You know, if I, if I had a nickel for every time a counter spell also produced me a Thopter, I'd have two nickels. Which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. Following those counter spells up, we have the Retrofitter Foundry. So this is a one-cost artifact. It does a lot of things, really. Uh, it's not quite budget. It's like ten to you know fifteen-ish dollars. 
You can pay three mana to untap it, so obviously it has some tap abilities, which includes paying two to tap it down to create a servo, paying one to sacrifice a servo to create a thopter, or tapping it down to sacrifice a thopter to create a 4-4 colorless artifact creature token. Uh, so if you have a ton of mana, you know, if you actually found a way to go infinite in this deck, you could just create an infinite army of uh, 4 4s. And it's hilarious. Also, not budget, the Simulacrum Synthesizer. Uh, so it's going to enter, it's going to scry you two whenever you cast another artifact of mana value three or greater. You're going to create one of Urza's constructs. They're great, we love them, they're very powerful. Following that up, we have Artificer Class. This is actually moderately budget, sitting around like the six to seven dollar mark. Uh, so it's gonna be a mana reducer, which is cool. It's gonna uh, let us do a little bit of digging. Cool. We really care about that last step, which is going to let us create a token copy of another artifact that we control at the end of our turn. Uh, so yeah, I think Artificer Class is great. I put it into my Brutaclad Bobblehead deck recently, uh, but it's super strong. Uh, if you guys want to see a Brutal Clad Bobblehead deck tech, let me know. Efficient Construction, back in the budget. Uh, so four mana, whenever we cast an artifact spell, we're going to create a Thopter. It's great. Mechanized Production, also budget, right? So it's around like 50 cents to a dollar. We're going to enchant an artifact. At our upkeep, we're going to create a token that's a copy of it. And if we have eight or more you know, at that point, we win the game. Uh, cool alternate win con. Um, really here for the copies more so than the thought that, oh, I'm definitely going to win this. And last but not least for our token support is the Thopter Spy Network. So for five mana, beginning of our upkeep, we're going to create an artifact creature token, which is a Thopter with flying. Whenever one or more of our artifact creatures deal combat damage, we're also drawing cards. So we've seen it here quite a few times where we're getting token support tied to card draw, right? We're keeping our hand full, which is feeding Da Vinci, uh, both for things to discard himself, as well as his first ability, which is going to make all of our flying thopters huge. Now, let's go back up to the top. Let's go back through some creatures that are really just here for pure artifact support and not specifically token. Uh, Again, moderately budget, right? Like five to uh, like eight bucks. So leaning a little more towards out of budget, but like eh, it's budget friendly enough. And that's the Cyberman Patrol from Doctor Who. All of our artifact creatures have Afflict 3. We love that. Emery, Lurker of the Lock, is going to reduce the cost of themselves for each artifact we control. So they're probably going to give them out for a single blue mana. When they enter, we're going to mill four, but we can also tap them to cast one of our artifacts from our grave. So, pretty strong. Ethereum Sculptor is really just here to reduce the cost of all of our artifact spells by one. Karn Legacy Reforge is going to have their power and toughness equal to the greatest artifact uh, that we control, which is at least five, right? They're a five-five for, uh, they're a five cost minimum five-five. At our upkeep, we're going to add a colorless mana for each artifact we control. The mana can't be spent to cast non-artifact spells, um, but that's okay. We can still use it to pay for Da Vinci. Uh, and a lot of our spells in here are artifacts, so we're not really all that worried about it. We also don't lose that mana as uh, steps and phases end. Liberator Urza's Battle Thopter. So they are a Thopter themselves, so they do benefit from uh, Da Vinci kind of pumping them. Uh, they also let us cast instant, no, not instant, they let us cast our colorless spells at flash speed, which is nice. And whenever we cast a spell is greater than Liberator Urza's Battle Thopter, we do get to pump them up. Master of Ethereum follows that up. Their power and toughness are equal to the number of artifacts we control. So, at least a 1-1 one, one for 3. Almost always bigger than that, though. Uh, they also act as a universal artifact creature lord, which is great for us. Master Transmuter is kind of hilarious. Uh, so, 4 cost, 1-2, not great. Uh, they're an artifact creature for what it's worth. But we could pay a single blue and tap them to return an artifact we control 
back to our hand and shoot out any other artifacts we want. And they're super budget. Uh, obviously, I feel like, you know, a pure artifact strategy isn't super common, which is probably why, you know, they're not seeing a ton of play, but I think they're pretty strong here. Especially with things like the Mer Battle Sphere with the threefold Thunderhawk. Things that when they enter are generating us extra tokens uh, can be very strong. Padim, Console of Invocation, uh, gives all of our uh, artifacts hexproof. And if we happen to have the highest mana value among artifacts on the field or tied for it, we're going to draw extra cards each turn. Steel Overseer is going to pass out some plus one plus one counters to each artifact creature we control, uh, which is great news for all of those Thopters we're creating that are starting off as zero twos, right? We don't need to get in for a lot of damage with them as they fly, um, because any damage is going to trigger all of those various effects that are like, hey, did one of your creatures deal damage, draw a card? So, good value there. But guys, that is the deck tech for Leonardo. There's a bunch of cards I didn't go over, but as always, there is a link to the deck in the description down below. Cyclone, again, you rock. I appreciate you interacting with the community post. Uh, but guys, until next time, I'm Mechanized Minion, a.k.a. the Energy King, and good luck with your builds.